Hello everyone, this is Helen H. and welcome to my channel, Moss Cottage. I hope everyone is doing well today. I thought today I would address something um, about collage because I have some new subscribers and even some of my older subscribers who may not do collage or may be new to collage. I just wanted to do a little uh, basic collage material video. Um, if you see my net last video, I will link it at the end of this in the end screen. Um, I did finish up that collage. I actually put the, I didn't have a focal point, so I put this beautiful butterfly on, and then I put the sentiment, push your boundaries. I outlined it in black, and then I put some black splatters. If you watch the, um, the video, I had some gold splatters on there and I added some black splatters. So that is done, okay? So today, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about collage materials that you already have on hand or most likely you already have on hand. Um, it's fun to go out and buy the uh, pretty collage papers and collage tissues and all of that, but some of us don't have the money and some of us just, I don't want to buy anything more really to clutter my craft room because I want to do a big arrange and I need to get rid of stuff, not gain stuff. So I'm going to put this aside. We might, if, if I can get through this, we might actually make another little collage using some of this. So I have just a huge pile over here of things that I suggest that you can use in collage and I'm just going to start from the top of the pile. Uh, so the first thing is wrapping paper. Um, you can tear off pieces of wrapping paper. You can cut out designs from your wrapping paper. Um, it's nice. Generally it's nice and thin so it's easy to glue down. Uh, and you know, just use colors that are pleasing to you. Um, I'm sure you have some wrapping paper. Or when you go out to buy new wrapping paper, you know, you may want to consider not only who the gift is for, but can you use some of that paper in your art room when you're finished wrapping the gift? So that's wrapping paper. The other rolled paper would be. Um, wallpaper. Now this is a vintage, very vintage wallpaper. This is actually a wallpaper border. But if you look at the print on here, just tearing out certain pieces of this would make beautiful collage fodder. Look at the border even on this, just cutting the border out. Or this tulip. If you cut a piece out of the middle here or tore a piece, I would probably tear this. Um, you wouldn't even know that that was a tulip. It just looks like beautiful painty paper. So wallpaper is another thing that you can use. Um, tissue paper, when you get gifts, this was obviously a gift because it's got holes here, here, and here. I'm thinking that something was, oh yeah, this came from Pennsylvania. One of my girlfriends had wrapped up something in this and of course the tissue paper had to come home. So tissue paper is great. It's nice and thin. I love the black and white because no matter what colors I use, I tend to also use some black and white to add contrast to the color. So you can use printed tissue paper or even just pieces of colored tissue paper, you know, like uh, which also comes in gifts and stuff like that. But you can buy the crafting tissue paper. This is just a sheet of regular uh, tissue paper that you'd wrap a gift in. Um, and even, you know, layered together, they, they look so beautiful. So tissue paper, everyone has tissue paper, right? Napkins, uh, great source of, uh, collage fodder because there's an endless supply of napkins out there. This napkin actually has two sides. It's got a marble and then a black and white polka dot. I've never seen a napkin like this before that has two patterns on one napkin. Um, look, see, I've never seen a napkin like that before. But anyway, if you're going to use a napkin though, you do want to take a piece of washi tape or a piece of scotch tape and you want to make sure, now this one's actually just kind of falling apart, make sure that you take off all the plies and you only use the top ply of the tissue or the, uh, sorry, the napkin. So you want to take the other plies away and I think, let me see here if this is actually another ply or not. There might actually be another ply. Simple way to find out, just take a little piece of washi tape 
or, or scotch tape. You can use either. This is how I do it. Some people can just do it with their fingers and just do that. I find it easier just to go ahead and stick that. Okay, so there is another ply. See it coming off here? Okay, now you can save these underneath layers. You can stamp on them, these, these under ones, because they're very thin. You can stamp on them and make them new collage fodder or just use them for cleanup. You don't have to throw them away. But then you're left with the tissue with just the basic uh, top ply and it's not going to fall off when you put it on your collage. Otherwise, you're just gluing the back pages or the other plies to it and the top has potential to fall off. So those are napkins. Uh, the other thing, okay, so I was digging around to think what else can I use for collage fodder that I have. And I have so much scrapbook paper, it's not even funny, but a lot of it is card stocky, which you can use that for collage, no problem. You just need to use a really good glue to make sure it sticks down. But I found that I also had in my six by sixes, I had pads of this paper. Now this particular paper is from the paper studio, which is Hobby Lobby. I bought these on clearance for $2.24 and they are floral papers, and uh, they're actual paper paper. They're not, they're not cardstock, so these would stick really well, you know, into a, a collage, and, you know, just beautiful colors. If I'm not mistaken, uh, someone let me know in the comments who shops a lot. I believe that Hobby Lobby actually still do does carry these two paper pads. Now, they may not be on um, clearance, but they do, I think, still carry these. So that's six the, your smaller papers. Well, in that little 6x6 six six container, or the container I have, the tote, little tote with the 6x6, six six, I also found origami paper. And the reason I have the origami paper is because I do have some dyes of little Japanese uh, girls that I, I paper piece. And the origami paper has tiny little patterns on it. So for cutting out their dresses and stuff, it's not too big of a print that you can't see print on their dresses. So this one is rather large. I think I probably just, I don't know, I just love paper so I got this one but look at these beautiful papers you can kind of see right here just you know think about just tearing off little pieces of this origami paper to use also and guys if you don't have any of this stuff look out for it at thrift shops and stuff most of the stuff that I buy I find at thrift shops or you know like the that the paper pads reduced at Hobby Lobby then of course there is book page now book page we can get anywhere this is a nice older piece it's yellowed you know and stained but if you're doing a collage and you're doing black and white and you don't want the yellow staining look you know get a newer book and you will have whiter pages but book page is really good you just want to make sure that the words that are on the book page are not offensive or not something that's you know, war related and you're making a collage about peace or something, right? So then here's another thrift shop find, 50 cents, a coloring book. And this is Man Mandela Wonders. So look, black and white again. I love black and white as accents. So coloring books. And you might say, well, you know, I only have a coloring book of, you know, I don't know, something, but it's not Mandela's. It doesn't matter because you're only going to use a tiny piece at a time. Let's. I'm just going to tear one out. Let me see if I can tear one out here. It doesn't matter which one. Let's see if I can tear it kind of neatly here. I mean, not that it matters because I'm going to tear it up anyway. But no, I can't. Okay, it's perforated, but you know that would be that would be you know like a normal person, right? So coloring pages. You can get coloring books at the Dollar Tree for sure. Then we're going to get creative ourselves, and we're going to look at our own stash of what we have. Jelly prints. Now this is jelly printed on, um, this is actually tissue paper. This is gift wrapped paper, you know, like white gift wrapped tissue paper that I just um, jelly printed. I actually made that one today. Um, and, or paper that you just paint 
designs on. I, this one I did in black and white, and I think that's Payne's gray behind it, because I wanted this specifically to tear up in little pieces to use in collage. So just paint some marks on paper, and you've got super simple but very effective collage paper. Then, of course, jelly prints on paper itself. You know, just all your jelly prints, you just tear them up and use them. And then there's this, your underpaper. Save your underpapers because look at this. Look how awesome this is. Not particularly this side, but, you know, I could stencil over this part where, see how it's kind of solid color? I could still stencil over that, and it still does have some cool stuff in the background, but this side right here is awesome, okay? Just think about just cutting out or tearing out a little piece. Let's go ahead and tear out a little piece. I'm going to tear this little piece right here. Oops, is this folded? No, okay, this is just, what this is on is just plans for a Walmart that I took out of the trash at um, a, a town building where my antique shop is. <laughs> they had it in the trash. They had rolls of this stuff, and I was like, well, I'll have me some of that. And I took it out of the trash because I figured if it's in the trash, they're not going to arrest me for it, right? I hope. Anyway, I saw some more the other day, and I was so tempted to get some more rolls, but I'm like, Helen, you're trying to redo your... your uh, craft room, no more stuff. So anyway, so I've got some of this stuff that I've been seeing me pull uh, and put on my desk. Let's just use some of this and make a quick collage. I, this is just a really simple uh, video on papers that you have probably in your house already that you can use for collage or papers that you can super simply make. If you don't have a gel plate, don't worry about it. You can do that, right? You can just scribble on paper and make marks and use that or your your under papers right so let's get the collage book what did I do with it oh here it is so the other day I made a video yeah and I showed you this right at the beginning that I finished this one here so let's go ahead and since this is open let's go ahead and make one on this side and I already when I made this book uh, this collage book, that's what I made it for, to be a collage book. But I went ahead and I put something on every page just to get me started so that I didn't ever have to stare at a blank page. Even if it was just one little piece of paper like that with a piece of paint on it or some paint on it. Every page has a little something something. And this one, if you can see, I just have a piece of... This is a jelly print, but I think this is actually just a roll off on a jelly print because this is so squared off here. I think my brayer was here and I might have just uh, stamped my stamps, cleaned my stamps and stencil on top of it. So it kind of gave it that, that look. But anyway, so let's just make a quick collage if we can. Uh, here. So let's see what we have here. I had pulled out, now I have this paper here. This is from Birdie the Recycled Hippie Chick. She had given me some uh, painting papers, a whole bunch of different painting papers. But for this particular page and this one, I'm actually using, see how it's right here? I'm actually using the back side, which looks like a layout for a development or something. It's got people's names on it. It looks like track numbers and everything. So um, I'm going to go with that. I kind of want to echo these colors here on this page because it opens up this way, but you don't have to. You know, whenever you do any kind of art journaling or collaging, you can just use one page. That's fine. And this could be totally different, right? So I'm just going to kind of look what I have here. I might use a little bit of this jelly plate or jelly print because it's got green and I don't know if you can see this page here, the paper I had put on the background before I started the collage had some red paint on it or some, and it looks kind of pinky now because it, it might have been watercolor or something. So I've got some pink on here also. Now I'm probably not going to use that big piece like that but I might want to pull a little bit of that pink over here. So um, actually, I think I'm gonna get rid of the top part, this part, and just use a little bit of the pink on this to carry the pink over. And where we're gonna put it, I don't know. I'm just gonna tear up some pieces first and then we'll, then we'll figure it out. Uh, now, I do also have um, 
this piece of tissue, which I really like. So I think I'm just going to randomly tear some of this. And on my collages, I do a combination of straight edge and like a straight cut edge and torn edges. And that's fine with me. So we're gonna do that. We can always tear it if we do want it torn. And let's see what else here. I've got this piece. Now this was a piece of paper I made. Let's see if I can get the bigger piece. I think I showed it in my other video. It's just a piece of paper I drew circles on. It looks like it was a rub off paper or a bad jelly print that I just put these large turquoise circles on. But when you cut them in half, then they become little arches. So they are fun. Um, I've got tissue, so I'm not gonna use any more tissue and I'm not gonna use the napkin. Uh, I think maybe we'll just stick with this for right now. Let me see here. Now, I do have to the side here, oh my gosh, my desk is just a nightmare right now. From the, the paper I showed you that I got at Hobby Lobby, the little six by six papers, this is one of the papers right here, this flowered paper. And I do have like this circle that I cut out of this. Um, we might be, we might use some of that. Although now that I'm looking at it, it's really too purple. But that doesn't mean we can't use some paper. So let's see if we can find a paper that maybe has some more colors that uh, see not so purpley because there's no purple in that page. And I do on this one actually want to match the two somewhat together. Let's see, I, you know, and it may not work. I may not have one in here and that's fine too. If I don't, I don't. I'm just looking to see if there's something that grabs my attention. Cause these, if you use six by six paper also, you get a smaller print. Um, no, I don't see one in that one. And I didn't think there was one in the other one either, uh, which I, I put it down here and I can't find it now. Oh, here it is. Okay, let me just check the other one real quick. Otherwise, we're just going to use this stuff. So this is the other one. And see, there's this even this black and white butterfly paper. Or, yeah, black and white butterfly paper. If that was a different color, I would probably use that. But I already have so much black and white I want to use. Um, let's see here. This one has all... See, this one has cool patterns in it, too. Uh... But I was looking hoping that maybe they had a floral that would go, but not for this particular page. But definitely other pages, right? Beautiful florals in those. All right, let's just go ahead and see what we can do with this. And I did also tear some of this out. Um, but whether I'll use it or not, I don't know. I just don't know. So let me just go ahead and play because that's what we do with our jelly or with our... our uh, collages and jelly prints and all of that we just play and the reason I say that playing about jelly prints is this morning my girlfriend and I uh, did some jelly printing and when we do it we actually do it quite for hours <laughs> because you know that's not a that's not a investment of time that you're going to get your jelly plate out and all that mess for five minutes you know I don't have anywhere to do it other than my dining room table so, you know, I'm definitely going to be putting some kind of investment of time in it when I get that stuff out. So I'm just playing, I'm just moving things around. Oh, you know, and I also, what did I have? I have this here. So let me just tear a piece of this. And if I'm getting too heavy on the black and white, we can fix that because we can always add some more turquoise, you know, from something else. So this has quite a few straight edges, so I'm just gonna tear those off and do this. Now, of course, if you have um, this coloring book paper, you can also color it, you know, use your colored, colored coloring paper, right? Why not? So I'm just trying to figure out here, this is kind of causing me an issue here. So now I'm wondering if I don't want to go ahead and use this bigger piece somehow. And what if we tuck that under there? Uh, now I could also, I could also tear this one down a little bit. It doesn't have to be so big. Let's see here. Uh, that one's going that way. I like a little variance in the direction of things. So 
you know, it's just, it's just play, right? Just play a little bit. I kind of like that, like that. Now, I do have one little hump here, one, one little arch here that got torn off somewhere. We could maybe put him somewhere. I'm still trying to use this piece, but I think it's probably not going to happen. Let's see here. Mm. Mm. You know what? I think I think we're going to put this down, and then we're going to see if there's something else that needs to be added to it because uh, we've got tons of choices. So let's go ahead and put this down, the, the color book. I don't do coloring books. Um, I should. I've got enough of them. Um, but it's just not something I've gotten into or that I really enjoy coloring in books. But now that I'm thinking about it, I do have some really nice coloring colored pencil sets that might be fun to color with. So I'll have to give that a try. All right, I'm just gonna get that down. And I'm gonna put down this jelly print here. And it really doesn't matter if the colors are spot on or whatever. You don't have to just stick to three colors, right? We can use as many colors as we want. I just didn't want to put something, let's say orange and yellow and, and purple on this page when I have the blues and greens on that page, right? That's just the way my eye would be. Okay, and now we have this little guy here. Now if we put him there. I'm just looking at my little scraps again. Here's this pink that we cut or tore from that piece. Could we put another piece of that? Like that would look nice like right there. And I don't mind leaving the other the underside paper either. Like that you can see what the actual paper underneath. Some people feel they need to cover the whole page. And if you really hate what's underneath, that's fine. But most of the time, I actually like having um, the collage, or you know, show the, the paper around it. All right, and then what did I say? Maybe a little piece like this, like that. You know what would be nice? Here, I have one more piece of this from that jelly print. What I think I'm gonna do is, as best I can, which is not gonna be great because I'm terrible at this, I am going to cut a circle-ish thing. Okay, because I've got this kind of circle here, so now I'm kind of echoing it again down here. You do not have to do this. This is just me and my brain thinking this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And do not ever throw away the negative space. This, to me, this is gold in, in a, a journal. The negative spaces, these are so fun to play with, play with when you uh, make a journal layout. Okay, so we've got that like that. Now, um, I pulled out to save some time a few, where did they go? a few potential focal points, which for me, I'm just using stickers, and that's what this guy is here. Now, he had a very white outline, so I just took my uh, blending tool with some, I think that's vintage photo or something, and just blend it over to dull down the whiteness a little bit. Now, I have this one here, which is like a solar system, or I have this one here, which is this Roman statue in the back, like backwards. Or I've got these really fun glasses. And you know what? It's the glasses because these colors are perfect. I love those little glasses. So let's go ahead and put them down. Let's just figure out where we want them. I, I like to bridge my elements. So like if I put the glasses here, I'm bridging these two together so there's not just all that straight line, okay? So I think I'm gonna do that, but before I put that down, I am going to see if on my desk, 
there it is, I can find my Stabilo because I kind of want to go around this circle with my Stabilo. Now, if you don't know, a Stabilo is just a watercolor pencil. Uh, this is a Stabilo All. Um, and it's just a watercolor pencil that, you know, people use for shading and whatever. That's what I used on the outside of this page. I'm just kind of going around the elements a little bit with it, and I'm going to water activate it a little bit. And you don't even have to go around all, all the lines. And then I am going to do the sketchy border, which I did on this side, and just kind of to tie them together. But uh, any kind of, any black watercolor pencil will work. You don't need to have a Stabilo. You can get them on Amazon. I think you can get them at craft stores, but it just depends anymore. The craft stores are so lousy lately that in their selection, I don't know if you can uh, get them or not. But um, anyway, oops, I'm just trying to get my brush clean here and wet so I can do the Stabilo. And I'm just going to go around real quick, around, see how it at water activates. And I didn't even go around to everything. I don't necessarily need to box in everything. But I do like the edge of the paper to have some, this, just like that. Oh, yeah, and then I had around my little circle here. And see, I'm getting some on. I don't care if I'm getting it on the little circle or not it's just fine with fine with me okay all right so that's kind of like the naked collage right there so now we're gonna go ahead and put those glasses on so let's spend the next half hour trying to see if Helen can get the sticker back off because that's always special the butterfly actually I got quite quickly but sometimes it does take me a little while okay now these are really sticky stickers. They're not old or anything, so I'm not, uh, they will stick. Okay. Oh, I like that a lot. Okay, like that. So then let us just go ahead, because I put black splatters on that page, yeah, I'm gonna do it because, just because I can, right? just because I want some black splatters. Black and white splatters are amazing. Now what I do want though, get that out of the way, I need to cover this page because this page is already splattered. I don't want more splatters on that page. So we're just going to splatter this page. And you know what? I don't want my glasses splattered either. So what I did with the butterfly and what I'm doing with the glasses, I'm just using the under paper that it was attached to, and I'm just going to hold it on there while I, oh my goodness, while I splatter so that um, I don't get it on the glasses. If you want it on your thing, that's fine. You, you don't have to cover it up. But I'm just going to say, if you're going to do somebody's face, just take a piece of paper and cover the face because you don't want a black splatter like right in the middle of someone's face and ruin, you know, the, the picture. All right. So there, I just lift that up. And that way, see, my glasses don't have the splatter on them. And then the only other thing I need to add now, I think, is a sentiment. This one says, push your boundaries. And I'm looking at the glasses here, and let's see what it says. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, all of these are really good. All of these are very good. So let's use let's use be fearless. Why not? Let's be fearless and use be fearless. So I'm just trying to think where do I want this? I think I'm actually going to put it down here. Right here. Down there right down here because the other one's up here so I'm putting this one down here and if again if I wanted these to be a little more stand out ish I could go ahead and I, maybe I will do that on both of them just put the stabilo all on there and where okay now what happened to that paintbrush here it is just go ahead and go around them 
so they just so they pop out a little bit like that all right so that's it guys I have painty paper I've just got some uh, map type paper uh, jelly print coloring book page stickers you know whatever you don't have to go out and buy the expensive collage papers to make collage and um you know I, I so i that was the whole point of this video was use what you have use up what you have and don't feel you need to go out and be buying all the pre-printed stuff to use you know if you didn't have the stickers Go through a magazine and pick out some pictures from a magazine that or a book. That's all you need to do. And you would have a, a beautiful collage yourself. So, guys, I hope that that helps a little bit and, you know, makes it easier to, to think that you can collage because you, on, you on, honestly do have materials. If you look around your house, you do have plenty of materials that you can collage with. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I ask that you do. And until the next video, I hope you're all truly blessed. Bye-bye.